Okay, still out here at Park and Chill on 5th Street, North Vegas. Again, where the in and out is. That's the important part you need to know. But uh, John just rolled in with his car and people started talking about it. So I'm gonna talk to him about it. Say hi, John. How you guys doing? Hey, uh, so tell us about this beauty. So it's my 97 Supra. It's a JDM, so right-hand drive. Yes. It's got a big turbo on it, the fuel system. It's on E85, it's good for about 600 horsepower. How much? 600. You're kidding me. Yeah. Holy mackerel. Yeah. 600 horsepower this out of one. this. So what, I mean, what all have you done to this? So exactly wise, it was stock when I got it, so the underglow, uh, the wheels, the suspension, uh, it has a hog tag, like I said earlier, big turbo, carbon, full carbon wing. Oh, let's go back and look at that. Full carbon wing. Obviously, you gotta do the seats. Got an IC7 dash. Japanese plates, got the HKS carbon uh, exhaust. And you told me this is actually registered over there, right? Right, so if, if you're in Japan and you run these plates, those are registered to me. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I deregistered the vehicle, but I'm pretty sure they still got the record of it. Okay. So how do you get away with that here? How does that work here? Um, Doesn't Nevada DMV want you to register it here? No, no, it's registered here. I have classic classic vehicle plates. Ah, okay, got but it. These look way, you know, way cooler, so. Yes, they do. Way cooler. It's always an icebreaker for the car. Yeah. Can't really see too much in here, but we'll take a peek. Right hand drive. Isn't that kind of like the most desirable JDM thing? Oh yeah, it's fun. You know? It's always a head turner when I pull to these car meets. Wow. Hey, so so tell me, I mean, we were kind of talking a little bit about it off camera. But it sounds to me like you got into this while you were serving in the military overseas, right? Yeah, yeah, in Okinawa, Japan. Okay. So and that's where you kind of got into this whole thing? Uh, well, when I was stationed here before I left, you know, I had Fox bodies, had Lightning. Okay. Had a Hellcat for a little bit. Wow. Uh, before I left, I had a CTSV. Okay. So when I went to Japan, it's like when in Rome, so I was like, I got to get something cool. Good so point. I had to get the coolest car on island, which is, you know, legendary over there. Yeah, yeah. Most people over there got like Hondas or like the Evos, which are they're fine, but, yeah. you know, the Super pulls up. Especially this one's a six-speed uh, twin-turbo original car. Yeah. Which over there they call it the RZ. And manual transmission. Six-speed, yes. Oh, even better. Yeah. So it sounds to me like, well, obviously you were into cars long before you went overseas. Oh, yeah. What, what got you into cars? Was it just a family the thing? Fast or? and the Furious. Oh, yeah. Fast yeah. and the Furious. You know. I can't tell you how many guys have said that to me. Literally. Yeah. I could tell you from the day I saw the previews. It was like summer of like 2000, I think it was, or 2001. Mm. And I saw it on TV and I was like, this is cool. You know, yeah. from playing with cars to like driving my dream car. So yeah, yeah, it's fun. It's I, been a ride for sure. <laughs> you know what? That Just so many people have said that. And like guys more of my generation, it was movies like Bullet or French Connection okay. or, yeah, yeah, yeah. or the original Gone in 60 Seconds or something like that. Yeah. So, man, those movies, they stick with you, don't they? I literally watch every single one of them, too. So yeah. I don't care if it's about it's not about the cars anymore. They still got cool cars in them, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's so. a fact. That's a fact. Well, this, this is just a really, really Thank nice you. build. Super clean, really pretty, and, man, tons of horsepower. And you said, too, that you had the wheels built for you over there yeah they're custom made from uh, stark which is like kind of like their pet boys in japan yeah <laughs> so i picked the color the offset the size you know, so custom to this car which the offset is like perfect for this setup very nicely done i gotta tell you and like i was telling muzzy i'm just now at this point in my life kind of beginning to understand the whole jdm thing a little bit more yeah me too i was, I was uh, you know a v8 guy my whole life yeah exactly exactly going from a v8 to uh, well, a supercharged v8 to a turbo uh, inline six these two jz's uh, you know they gotta be respected because they're yeah. they're they're fast you know yeah well that's what is mind-boggling to me that here you got that many cylinders and you're cranking out over 600 horsepower yeah i can go i can go more i can get more power out of it but the injectors are what's limiting me right now so the injectors are maxed out um 
but if I do bigger injectors, I want to do bigger turbo, different man different yeah. exhaust manifold, and yeah, you know. At I what point though, and this is something that I've asked a couple of guys, at what point though can the car just can't handle that much horsepower? I mean um, the rest of the car, the suspension and the frame and the body and all yeah. of that. Is that a thing? So for two J's and like the super world, like you know, you could uh, you could push a lot of power stock wise, but if you if you get it built, you know, these are a thousand horsepower all day. Which wow. is funny because every time someone asks me, hey, a thousand horsepower, it's like nah, six hundred which is like, I guess, you know, uh, a low number for, for having a Supra, but to me it's fun. I can't imagine having a thousand. Well, the whole idea is to have fun, right? Yep. You, you buy what you want, you do what you want with it, and then you drive the wheels off. Oh, definitely. Wow. That is a really, really cool car. Very nice build, John. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me about it. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank you.